somewhere here is the sonography of the arm with weight acting downward as 125 pounds. And there is the weight here that's 600 pounds. Then there is a bone attachment here. And there is a <coughs> there is a hydraulic cylinder here. makes an angle of 40 degrees with horizontal <coughs> call this point as <coughs> A, this point as B, then some of the distance. This distance here is 1 feet, this distance here is 8 feet, <coughs> and the distance between the center of gravity and the A is another 4 feet and the vertical distance between A and B is another 1 feet. And <coughs> the question here is to determine the reactions at the pin A and the compressive force in the hydraulic cylinder. So we are looking at the <coughs> force here as the unknown forces at the pen and then we also <coughs> want to find the force in this particular hydraulic cylinder. Okay, so first, we, as I said, we need the free body diagram. And if I look at the <coughs> free body for the cranes, arm. <coughs> So you're going to have your first force around here, that's the weight, and let's call this as W1, and that's 600 pounds. That's a known force. Then if that's the center of gravity for the crane arm, there will be another force here, and its own magnitude is going to be 125 pounds. So those are two known forces for this particular problem. Then <coughs> A is the pin. I mean, if A is the point here, and that's a hinge. The hinge and pin are the same thing. And then at the point, I mean, at this point we don't know what the direction would be. So I could just place two unknown forces, call this as AX, I could place another unknown force, I could call that as AY. So <coughs> at the beginning, when you're not sure the directions, I mean, we know exactly how many forces are there, it's a hinge, so it has to have two unknown forces. I mean, that part is known. The only part which is not known at this point is whether AX should go this way or it should go this way. Same thing with the AY. We know that there is going to be an AY except we are not sure whether it's going to go up or it's going to go down. So <coughs> for the starting of the problem, in most of the time, a safe bet is to choose positive directions. 
So if this is x, this is y. Positive direction along x will be this. We choose that direction for ax. And positive direction for the y is going up, so we choose <coughs> that direction. So I mean, that's just a choice. And <coughs> only at the end, when you turn through calculations, then the actual sign will tell you whether your chosen direction was right or you need to switch. If it comes out positive, then you can maintain this. Or if it comes out negative, then you have to switch direction. So in the beginning, you don't have to spend too much time debating whether you should go this way or this way. You just start your problem with <coughs> a choice which is consistent being positive. Now, the second attachment is this here. So, if I look at the hydraulic arm, it's like a member like this, and this point is P, and I could make this point as C. Now, B is a pin, which means there is a force as P X, and there will be a force P Y. So those are two forces at point B. Then I'm assuming that the far end is also a pin. So it's going to be another force, Cx, and there will be another force as Cy. So for the member BC, we end up with four unknown forces. You have uh, force Px, Py, and you have Cx and Cy. And that's just too many unknowns. I mean, if I take that member by itself and write the equations for equilibrium, I mean, you could write three equations. And since the whole system was in equilibrium, then that member by itself should also be in equilibrium. And they said that if I write the equations, there are only three equations. I mean, you could, it doesn't matter what combination you pick, but <coughs> the net sum number of equations are going to be three. So the way I have drawn the free body diagram, there are just too many unknowns. But there is some <coughs> possibilities. First of all, uh, looking at this member,